today, well, yeah, I have a lot of Protect Lee uh, devices. I guess they really like me making my content. They sent me this, their newest box. But the reason why they sent me this is because I had some suggestions for this one. More ports, more RAM, not really necessarily a faster CPU, a better one maybe, but my biggest complaint was with this, if I wanted to install more modules and stuff of like that, more VPN throughput, it needed more RAM. Now both of these have 2.5 gig ethernet ports, but they were both, they both have soldered on RAM. They have external storage or upgradable storage, but the RAM, it's soldered on. Four gigs, maybe good enough for like a home router with just basic routing, nothing really too fancy, nothing special. But if you want to go a little bit further, you're kind of stuck. You got to replace the device. This one, though, has eight gigs of RAM. This one has four. So I'm going to go over some specs. I've already been running the box and I really, really like it. I've factory defaulted it. I'm going to put it on the internet. And I'm going to probably run through a couple things like some speed tests, going over the specs a little bit more, maybe set up a VPN and maybe add some other features to it and let you guys know. Now, I haven't used OpenSense in a while because I've been busy doing grand stream stuff. You'll notice I have a rack on the wall over there. Those panels are going to get painted and magnets put on them so I could take them off and look and stuff like that because I'm going to be doing some fiber stuff. But... I'm going to do some more VPN stuff. I installed the latest version of OpenSense and they changed the dashboard on me. Looks really nice. I like how you can move the widgets around and stretch them, make them bigger, and it just looks better. So, some specs of these two beasts from the Protectly Canada store, because I'm in Canada, yes. The four port version, VP, or the four port V1410, eight gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage and the version that's beside it the two port model difference of them they both have the uh what do they call this hold on i was just scrolling this the uh the page here they both have 2.5 gigabit ports but the other one i believe they both have the i226-v uh, network cards on board this one has the N5105, so it is actually a better CPU and it's faster, four core. And the other one, the two port model, has the, ugh, my page keeps changing on me. Stop it. The Celeron J3060 quad core. Now, the other one's gonna have more speed, so obviously it's gonna be a little bit more faster. Sometimes you just don't need that. For a home user, like I said, not much going on. Maybe just at routing, a couple VLANs, you know. If you don't install um, Zen Armor, that's what it's called. If you're going to install Zen Armor, you definitely want the bigger guy because it needs a little bit of RAM. I wouldn't install Zen Armor on this. You could, but it's not going to give you optimal performance. This one would be the better one to go with. Definitely would want the one with more RAM. And if you can get even more in maybe a newer model, if they come out with one with more RAM, then go for that one, depending on what you're going to do. Like if you're just a home user, the little one will be just fine. So I'm going to dive into some more specs here after I get my sheet back. They both have core boot supported. I'm going to be doing a video on that for you guys, hopefully. I do like the fact that they are fanless. Yes, they do not get hot. This beast, yes, because it's high power, it's got a lot of features and it does a lot, like it's a i5 monster, 10 gig information or 10 gig SRP in it, so it does get hot. This one does get warm. It's got fans on the top, so it's not too too hot, but it does get warm. These, you can pick them up, they're fine. I don't have any issues with those. And they're affordable. And in Canada, you can get them from a Canadian site and not have to worry about if it breaks, they can get it to you right away. I like that. Um, so I'm going to plug it in. It's going to go into the bottom of my rack there. It's going to be plugged into my 
PoE switch. We're going to do some VLANs and some other stuff and uh, go from there. So, did I mention this thing boots very quickly? Maybe about 20 seconds or so? I really like that. As you can see, the screen's here. I have all my stuff on here. Yes, you can see my WAN IP. Have fun. It will change very soon because the box will be offline and I'll get a new IP address. I don't care if you see it. It's just for lab stuff. But as you can see, I have my um, homepage set up just like this. There's nothing too special or anything changed around here. I just moved a couple widgets. I noticed that I could move things around. So if I grab this, I can move them. I did put my CPU at the top because I like to see that. And I like to see my traffic in and out. A quick fast.com shows that this thing will do a gigabit, no problem, in and out. 1.3 gig, I don't know how that's doing it, probably buffered. And we'll do our upload, one gig in and out. I do remember turning on and playing with, because this is a default install, there's nothing special there. As you can tell, the in and out is matching what we just saw there. I remember turning on, I think, unbound DNS, was it turned on? Yes, it's turned on. So probably some more configuration. I'm gonna go through all that and stuff like that for you guys. I just wanted to basically show you that, hey, it's the newest version. Actually, wait, is it? No, there's pending upgrade. So let's click that, see how fast that works. 24 megabytes, eh, it's not gonna be anything special. We'll go close and then we'll go update. Let's do the update. There we go. It will reboot. Okay. I plan on doing VPN because I did find Nick from Home Network Guy. I think it's Home Network Guy. Yes. He did a video right here. Nope, not right here. Let's go here. Let's go to his channel. Videos. He did a video right here with WireGuard. And I'm going to do and follow his video because I use WireGuard on a different appliance and I really like WireGuard. So I'm going to follow his steps and put it in a video for here. I'm not taking his content away, but I'm going to follow it and create my own VPN or WireGuard VTN on here. CPU, N5105, 4 core, 2 gigahertz. Um, eight. Oh, it's rebooting, I think. Did I hear it reboot? It does this little tick, tick, tick when it reboots. No, it must be because it's still reporting here. Eight gigs of RAM and the hard drive I put in here, I believe. Yeah, it's offline now. Um, I believe I put a 256 NVMe in there just because I had a spare one in there. So it boots really, really quick. I don't know if anybody else has tried this, but uh, you could take a 12 volt battery, like one of those little six amp hour batteries that you use for like security panels put an end on it and plug it into these things and it sips power. I tried one, it was on this one. It was at a office and we had no power and I needed something to rope because I was working on something and it worked great for that. I heard it tick, it does this little tick, 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 tick when it's fully booted. Let's see if this comes back. Probably have to refresh the page, yeah. And we're back up and running. See how quick that boots? It's like 30 seconds or so, very basic video um i wonder if there's a temperature thing here can we add a temperature temperature widget thermal sensors yeah let's add that i don't know where it went though oh it's over here i don't know if it i have to configure something i'll have to figure that out but i remember there being a sensor that we can configure and get working so we can see if it's getting too hot and stuff but i have a grand stream poe switch in there and it should show up in services DHCP. Holy, this has changed a little. This one maybe? Leases? Yep, there it is. My laptop and there's the Grand Stream Layer 3 switch. So, pretty basic video. I'm going to go over more. Got to get familiarized. Watch Nick's video and figure out how to do the wire guard. But I'm going to show you guys that. But uh, just basically want to show you guys that we have the new box, the V. 1410 i keep wanting to call it vp but that's this that's this box 
and I'm not going to do a setup I install it because I did that for this box and it was pretty much the same straightforward install and it worked great. So I'll leave it at that. You guys have a great day. That's messy. I know. Don't even bother telling me that it's messy. I know it's messy because it's being transformed into a rack and because I need it to be online. I don't have time to take it all down and be offline for the whole house. So it is what it is. You guys like and subscribe. Talk to you guys later.